Welcome to the Fall Equinox Ceremony of Four Rituals to Change Your Life. I would like to apologize for not being available right on the equinox. I had had such a great plan that I was going to take us and live broadcast from the Kilauea volcano on the big island of Hawaii, and then I didn't have signal down there, um, so it wasn't possible. And I think it's kind of interesting that I was going to broadcast from Kilauea and then it erupted today. So definitely there was big energy down there. I did bring um, a ceremonial bird seed cake and throw it to the volcano as an offering um, at my, during my visit aspirationally in preparation for our gathering today. And it's really nice to be here with you. And what we're going to do today is we're going to release a couple of things. We're going to release, first of all, any aspect of our goal that's just not been working. Sometimes when we start a you know, project like this one, we have all these different ideas in mind, all these different plans, dreams, and goals, and we try to bring them down into one goal, but it isn't always easy to distill. And sometimes we end up with like dangling threads and loose ends. And then those aspects kind of just get lost in the shuffle. Other times we might have some aspect that's central to our goal, but that when we try to go and do it, things just don't work out the way that we thought that they might. And then finally, there are sometimes aspects of a goal that we've set that are just no longer applicable or relevant to us um, as we go along the journey. Maybe we set out um, to do something that was like, very complicated and had a lot of steps. And then we find, oh, if I do the more simplified thing, it's better. Or maybe we think to ourselves, oh, I'm going to do this thing at this time of the day. And then we find, oh my gosh, well, as long as I get it done at some point in the day, that's good enough. It doesn't have to be at that time. So today our ritual is about clearing out the aspects of our goals that have left us feeling unsuccessful. And this is to help us to A, streamline the intention down to what is really possible and really obviously is the most desirable aspect of it for us because it's the part that we're doing. And B, it's to help lift the weight off of us physically, metaphorically, metaphysically, so that we're not feeling bogged down unnecessarily in the pursuit of our goal, because that bogged down feeling can turn into aversion and can keep us from doing the thing that we really know we want to do. So I mentioned it in my post a few weeks ago that for me, it's been celebrating my glow up, bringing my life force back through exercise and diet and losing weight. Of those three, I've managed to do the first two. I've done all the things that I said in my steps. I've been eating more salads. I've been walking. My new sneakers are now beaten up beyond belief because I've gone on so many hikes and I wore them to the beach and I went up on the mountain and into the water. So I know, and, and I got myself my exercise machine and I've been doing that regularly, except for when I was traveling, obviously, because it's here but I've been doing great. So I'm looking at the scale and I'm like, why isn't it budging? I'm doing all the things. So I've had, to, I'm giving up the idea that my health, I feel so much better. I look better. My clothes fit better. I'm giving up the idea that the scale needs to have a certain number on it in order for me to feel good about myself. That's the thing that I see is weighing, literally weighing me down in my pursuit of this goal. I would otherwise feel so content and happy with what's going on if I didn't have this particular um, demand on myself. So that's the thing that I'm gonna be releasing today is the idea that the scale needs to show that I'm healthy. And I'm gonna stay with the fact that my sneakers show that I'm healthy, my salads show that I'm healthy, my diet and my exercise show that I'm healthy. My skin has been glowing. So all these good things are happening for 
you know, this process, but that one part has just not been happening. So I'm going to forgive myself for it not working out the way I thought it would, or for having an attachment to that. And I wanted to open the floor and you don't have to share if you don't want to, but you can. Um, if anyone else has anything today that they want in the witness of our group here to share, I'm ready to let go of this part of my goal, or this is the thing that hasn't been working for me. And no pressure if it's, you know, <clears throat> if you're not feeling like you want to share it right now, but you can share if you want to. Give a little wave if you've got something you want to share, or you can bring yourself off of mute. Go ahead, Mary Beth. So my goal was to um, get a healthier, more flexible, stronger body. And I was going to do that through um, diet and exercise and Qigong and walking and all that. And overall, I, I'm really, really happy with what I attained. Um, one of my goals was, be able, was to be able to get in and out of the boat because I, I don't have really great quad strength and I attained that goal. Um, so that made me feel really good. The stumbling point for me each and every time is changing my diet. Hmm. Something just stops me. I mean, overall, I think I have a pretty good diet, but I do eat a lot of sugar, you know, and <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not the best diet in the world. Um, and so I'm giving that up. I'm happy with my physical exercise. I'm happy with, you know, keeping up with my strength training and all that. But as far as trying to totally revamp my diet um, into something that I perceive as being super healthy, I, I'm just not I'm, I'm giving that up. I'm not going to feel guilty. I think I posted this when I choose chocolate over broccoli. I <laughs> mean, that, that's just, that's just the way it is. Um, you no, know, I wouldn't fight with you. <laughs> I wouldn't then, fight with you over you know, it. <laughs> I, I was kind of disappointed because it was summertime and, you know, all the, the produce and everything. I don't know where you get your produce from, but I just could not find tasty produce even at the farmer's market anywhere nothing tastes like it did when I was a kid so you know, I, I just that was hard I've eaten a lot of tomatoes and a lot of zucchini I'll tell you that and a lot of green beans <laughs> nice but um yeah so that's the part I'm letting go of and just you know try to be do things in moderation and keep up my exercise program yes well hey you know Getting in and out of the boat when you were in Kauai was a big deal. And, and, in the, and also when you go to Lake Siskiyou or wherever you go, right. it's such a big deal to be able to climb in and out of that boat. Because believe you me, I have climbed in and out of boats. And I'm like, there are times when I'm like, I wish that there was someone behind me who could just right. <laughs> give me a little push to get up there. And, and honestly, it's so great that you did all of that. I think it's a good thing to let go of, to be like, you know, I'm not, I'm not likely to change my diet at this point. It sounds like you did add in the things you were growing in your garden. Right. And that those tasted good to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But as far as like eating salad every day, you know, just doing those things that are, you know, I do smoothies. I was doing green smoothies, all that new green smoothies. Ew, no more of that. <laughs> But yeah, I, so I'm, I'm really happy. I, I am really happy with achieving the, the, uh, the physical part of my goal, not the, you know, the eating part, but just the way my body feels. And since I've been back from Kauai, I don't know if it's the tan or what. I have had so many compliments on how much, how good I look, how relaxed, how my skin is glowing, how this and that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, something must be working. So yes, good. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. you know what? I think you look fantastic. And I am, you know, I think it sounds like it's great. I was, I actually was just having a conversation 
yesterday with a friend we were talking about this exact topic about like should i eat things that i don't really feel great about eating for health or is longevity the goal this is the real question is longevity the goal or is joy the goal right and i was thinking about how you know like obviously i don't want to do things that put me at major risk for diabetes or hypertension, those kinds of things. But I'm really like not in that zone at all at this point. I'm still have very low blood pressure. My blood sugar is good. You know, I'm still okay. I can eat a little chocolate here and there. And, and we talked about feeling like, um, you know, joy was maybe more important. So, yep. you know, Let's let let's hear that for joy. I love that. And it's not to shame anyone who is a very super clean eater. Right. More power to you. I bought endive yesterday. We'll see if I eat it or if I just look at it. You know, <laughs> it's gonna, it's a, there's gonna be a, a question mark there until probably after dinner tonight. Um, did we have anyone else who wanted to share? Tara, yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Um <clears throat> so just to pick up on this last part, um, I, I try not to make joy and longevity at my age binary. I, I try to combine it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> uh, so my goal was quite different. It was um, uh, to, um, to con my goal still is to trust my intuition more. But my, my method that I had set out was to daily ask nature, something in nature, something where I was likely to get some feedback, ask a question and listen for the answer. Well, that didn't work very well. <laughs> um, sometimes I forgot, sometimes I'd ask and crickets, nothing happening. So, but what did come up was a mantra that has been extremely helpful um, that naturally comes to me various times during the day. And also one time when I was um, sort of complaining to nature about how this wasn't working and, and then I just sort of shut up, I got back, just listen, just listen. Don't, if you hear something great, if you don't let it go. So I, I had this one major method in the beginning and that's the one that's going out with the bird seed. Yeah. Great. So it sounds like through this process of listening to your intuition, you really had to listen to your intuition <laughs> about what was going to work for you, as opposed to the constructed idea that you had about what you thought should be working for you. Yes. And also, um, what that mantra is um, sacred space above me, sacred space below me, sacred space around me. I trust, I trust, I trust. And what Let's I found- just that one more time. Sacred space above space me. Above me. Sacred space, space below, below me. me. Sacred, sacred space, space around me. Around me. I trust, I trust, I, I, trust. Trust. I, I trust. trust. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you. But, um, but, what it what appeared to me was that I could ask a plant a question and get an answer, but if I didn't open my heart and I didn't trust, I could do it until the cows came home and nothing was going to change. And so the real issue was not talking to a plant or a tree or whatever. The real issue was being able to trust. And, um, and it opened a whole bunch of stuff about not trusting. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's so, that's such a powerful learning, Tara. You had the example of, you know, the experience of setting a, setting a condition on your trust, uh, on your, on your intuition, like mm -hmm. under this condition, my intuition will manifest. Right. And then really realizing that what you had to do was to surrender conditions and relax into trusting. And then when that happens, kind of everything speaks, doesn't it? Exactly. It's the, I was setting myself up to fail. 
Mm -hmm. because I was setting myself up, you know, if one time it didn't work and I'm always questioning it, oh, you didn't talk to me, then, you know, I'm failing. Whereas if I just let it go and if it comes, what comes, but trust what comes and trust what doesn't come, yes, then yes. I'm, I'm much happier. <laughs> you know, I have a quote for this uh, that's really relevant to this that I just read this morning. It's short. And it's by Fred Lamott. He's a, um, what is he? He writes poetry, beautiful poetry. He's a Buddhist. Um, I don't actually know like if he's famous or if he's just someone I know through other people, but he's really got gorgeous, gorgeous poetry that he writes. And this isn't a poem that he wrote. <laughs> wrote. This is just <clears throat> a a quote, but it, it's so relevant. It takes many years of patient practice, faithful ritual to finally awaken and realize that you were never not awake, never not realized, and that no ritual was ever required. Until that moment, practice faithfully. And after that moment, practice faithfully. That's and great. how great that you came into the perfection of trusting yourself through that process and realizing that that really trusting yourself meant not stapling yourself down with a bunch of conditions. How great. So it's like the main thing is out the window, but the result is still sitting right here. Thank you so much for sharing that, Tara. And there's space. Okay. Any, yeah, of course, in case anybody else wants to share what you're tossing out with the bird seed today, what's going to be going away from you and you don't have to if you don't want to I know some of you are kind of on on mute, you know, but you're welcome to if you want I'll leave a little space and you can pull yourself off of mute if you like. Um, but no pressure. And meanwhile, while you think about if you'd like to share, I'm going to just show I've got my, my honey bird seed cake in this bowl here, and I've got a spot in my garden where I'm going to go put it. I feed birds outside here every day, and um, I have a spot where usually I put their little block of suet. So I'm going to just, I, the suet was gone when I got home from my trip, so I'm just going to put this in the suet's place um, today. But what we're going to do um, oh, and Tara says, what you read reminds me of Mary Oliver's poem, The Wild Geese. So true. So true that it was all already perfect, you know, but we think it's not. And that's the point of this entire ritual of release that we put so many conditions on ourselves and we think we're so imperfect. We're so flawed. We have a hard time envisioning how this thing that we've yearned for could already live inside of us. We tend to think of our goals as something that lives outside of us, but the interdependent co-arising of phenomena is based upon the fact that you exist in the first place. You know, if in order for the goal to even exist, I have to exist to have thought of it in order for me to even exist to think of it, it has to already live somewhere inside of me, maybe unpotentiated, maybe just in its raw state. But it's not like I have to go outside of myself and get something that is not me and bring it in here. I don't need to go get health and a glow from outside of me and bring it in. I just have to reach inside and find what's already glowing and healthy and bring her out. I don't need to go get my intuition or whatever else we may have set for ourselves. We don't need to leave out of ourselves to go get it and bring it in. We need to look within and bring forth that thing that was already there the whole time. And <clears throat> when we do this, we can see that really like three click of your heels, the magic was with you all along right? It is that, that truth. So that's what we're going to do today is we're releasing the parts of this that maybe we contrived mentally when we were still under the delusion 
that that thing we wanted was outside of ourselves. And it'll leave more room for what is within to surface, to be present, and to flower forth in this fall and fruit so that we can enjoy it. And then when we do our, after this, the homework that we're going to have, I'm going to talk about it right now so that I don't forget. The homework that you have after we do this ritual is at some point in the next month, I want you to create a personal ritual of elaborate sensory experience. What you're going to need is you're going to need a song that you're going to play over and over and over on repeat during this ritual. You'll need a, a drink. It can be orange juice, it can be water, it can be ginger ale, but it's ideally something that has a distinctive flavor. Um, you're going to need a scent, something that you love the smell of. It could be a fresh cut flower, or it could be some perfume, or it could be a favorite incense. You're going to need a special piece of jewelry or a special t-shirt or a lucky underwear, a special garment that you will wear. It can be jewelry or a garment that you will wear. <clears throat> so we've got smell, taste, touch. Um, we've got sound. And then we're also, you're, what you're also going to do is you're going to take um, your goal and refine it down to just a very few words, like one short sentence. So for example, in Tara's case, it might be trust intuition or yeah, trust my intuition. Because what we're going to do is we're going to get all those items together, put on the jewelry or the outfit or the special shirt or whatever, put the song on the thing on repeat, drink the, you know, sip the drink, have the incense burning or wear the perfume or whatever, have the flowers next to you and sniff them. We're going to immerse ourselves deeply in a sensory experience that brings all of those things together while we write by hand 100 times our refined goal. So trust my intuition. So you want it to be short. You don't want it to be long. <laughs> you don't make it elaborate. You know, for me, it might be honor my glow up. For Mary Beth, it might be, you know, healthy and radiant. Easy, something easy, you know, but we're going to condense that goal down into just its essential form, short essential form. We're going to write it a hundred times while we immerse ourselves in this sensory experience. And and, and you do have to do it the whole hundred in one sitting, and it's going to take some time. We can do it together if you want. We can probably, I, we can, we can, then we'd have to do it in November because I'm leaving um, in one week from today and I'll be gone until November 2nd, but we could, we could do it right before Thanksgiving. Actually, it would be perfect time to do this and we could get on here and do it together. I wouldn't mind at all. Um, and we're going to write our thing a hundred times. And when we write it a hundred times, you watch the magic that happens. Because then after that, when you smell that scent, when you taste that drink, when you hear that song, when you wear that sh sh shirt or piece of jewelry or whatever, that goal, it's like superpower activated because it has become embedded in, yes, you can choose your own song. So when we get together, like we'll mute ourselves so everyone can have their own song. Um, I have done this spell several times on myself when I needed to get my mind right about something, whether it was an intention I was setting or whether it was a quality that I wanted to bring forth in myself or whether it was that I needed to, to turn my mind away from a negative way of thinking to a better way of thinking. I've done this so many times. And to this day, if I'm driving in the car on, and that song comes on the radio, boom, it's right there. I put on that perfume, boom, it's right there. I drink that drink, 
it's right there. So the deep sensory immersion that we're going to do, binding that sensory immersion to the essential goal is going to make it so that that goal now lives inside of our senses. And it's not the thinking brain that's trying to make it happen as much as it's just part of our animal selves in our experience of our senses. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be what we'll do. And let's set that, maybe I'll set that for, I'll look at the dates and I'll set that for maybe like the weekend before Thanksgiving so that we can do it together and get online. It'll take a little while to do a hundred times of writing, but it would be totally worth it. And then we're all here with our accountability too, which is kind of nice. All right. So now I don't see anybody else who's raised a hand to share. So no worries and no pressure. Let's go ahead and gather up our, we're going to gather up our bird seed cake. You can hold it in your hand, or if it's in a bowl, you can hold it. I've got my hand on it and I'm holding the bowl. And here's what we're going to do is we're going to chant over this a few times over our bird seed cake. Okay. So get ready. We're going to chant. We're going to sort of say, what doesn't work out is not a mistake. It's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake. It's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake. It's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake. It's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake. It's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. What doesn't work out is not a mistake, it's nourishment. And take a moment now and whisper into your cake what it is that is going to become nourishment.
right. So now <clears throat> we've whispered into our bird seed cake. We're going to take it out and we're going to put it to the birds where they'll eat it. It can be somewhere on your property or you can take it to another natural place and put it in a park. You can put it, you know, anywhere that the birds will be able to eat this. And when the birds are eating it, they're taking the things that really were not essential to your success and they're turning it into something that they will find sweet and nourishing and delicious as opposed to feeling the weight or heaviness of disappointment or guilt about the fact that it didn't go the way the mind thought it was supposed to go. And then from here, we're going to schedule our immersion ritual for um, just before Thanksgiving. That'll be like a bonus ritual for this practice. And then we have one more ritual in the series, which will take place for winter solstice. And then we'll check back in, in March to see how everyone's doing. So everybody and Joanne, sorry that you, sorry to have missed you, but I'm so glad you came for the end. And we are going to, I hope, I hope you all have a great night. We're going to have a great night and I will upload this video so that everybody can go back and watch it tomorrow if they want or thereafter. I hope everyone has a great night. Thank you for coming tonight. And sorry that I was running so late with all of this when I was away last week, but I did tell, I told folks at the beginning and I'll share again, I did make a bees, a, a bees, a bees, a bird seed cake. And I threw it into the volcano in Hawaii as an offering aspirationally for us so that we could, uh, cause I wanted to broadcast it from there, but I couldn't. So I just tossed the bird seed cake in and I was like, when we get to do this, this represents this offering. And so it's kind of perfect that yesterday Kilauea erupted and we've got volcano power and the creation of new earth behind our intentions. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.